Hey guys, welcome to this video. I am so excited. As per the title of this video, today I'm going to be walking you guys through the process of buying a car. Because I feel like the entire process is so confusing and it can be really daunting. And also I figured the best way that I should film this video is me literally sitting in my car. I have my notes here. I even have notes. I came prepared. And yeah, let's get started. Your first step should be deciding what kind of car do you want to buy. Do you want to buy a second hand, a new car or a demo car? I personally opted for a new car because I feel like I'm less likely to have any complications with that car and it's new, it's out of the box, I'm the only person who has touched that car whereas with the second hand car the process is a lot different because you first need to check whether the car has been serviced properly throughout the years there needs to be proper documentation regarding that and also there are a lot of checks and inspections that you need to go through and the process is just way more different than if you're buying a new car and then your third option would be buying a demo car which i feel like this is a very good option a demo car is one of those vehicles that they have at the dealership on display and the cars that people basically test drive this is a good option because it's kind of like you're buying a second-hand car that's really taken care of very well since it's been by the dealership you know that they took care of it very well and also it's a lot cheaper than buying a new car because basically this car has been used and in a way you're getting a really good discount for the car okay step two would be having a set budget you need to decide realistically what you can afford and how much you're willing to put away every month towards your car because also it's not just your monthly installment you need to think about things like insurance your car tracker the price of fuel and also things like how much is it going to be to like maintain and like service your car or if something happens and let's say you need to change a tire how much do those specific tires for your car cost there's no point in you being able to pay the monthly installments if you can't service your car think of all the costs mentioned your monthly installments and the cost of maintenance should be one of your top two priorities because then things like your car tracker or your insurance I, that's a bit more on the affordable side so your car tracker shouldn't cost you more than 200 rands per month and the cost of your insurance is based on a number of factors but it shouldn't differ that much based on the car insurance that you use literally i feel like this should be where you put a lot of your energy because then you need to decide on which car can you afford and also based on the car that you're buying how much is your insurance gonna cost how much are the maintenance cost of that vehicle and literally have a chart where you can compare each car so that you can see the different costs because also you don't want to be in a position where you feel like you really can't afford it and and you're living a very like tight budget life because of this car and with that i think step three for me was thinking of my non-negotiables these are things that you know you have to have in your car no matter what for me a top non-negotiable was it has to be an automatic car because i can't drive for shit and also i had to have apple carplay because Mm, I don't know that is where my priorities lie but for you it could be something like having an alarm having smash and grab windows if you can't park it could be something like having park assist or having a remote I wish someone had told me this because also there's no point in being like so stingy with the money that you spend on your car that you realize a few months later that actually it would have been nicer if you had all of these things I feel like after going through the whole process of deciding your budget and deciding your non-negotiables you have filtered a lot of cars out of the equation and hence it's going to be easier to know which dealerships you want to go to because i feel like that's a very like strenuous process you don't want to go to every dealership and having some sort of filter means that whenever you go to a dealership you already have some sort of objective in mind instead of just like going to shop around now that you have your story straight now that you have your budget now that you know what you want from your car now we can only go to the dealership please don't go if you don't know what you're doing if you have literally zero ideas of what to get because otherwise you're going to end up buying a car that you don't want and then you're going to cry and it's going to be so sad and i don't want that to happen to you so for me after going through the entire process i already have my top three cars in mind so i knew which dealerships i wanted to go to and when you get there like this is the fun part of buying a car literally have the time of your life um but also know your story because then the sales um person there is going to try to make you buy something that you may not need because obviously they do get commission for that and they're just doing their job but also as much as it can be very interesting and you may think you want something or you may think you need something that may not be the case and you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're actually paying for something that you actually don't need so obviously they are going to try to sell you a bunch of accessories or 
make you buy another car that may be outside your budget but you need to go there knowing your story and you need to be firm with what you want and also like take your time with the entire process go to multiple dealerships and see what they offer and most importantly negotiate literally negotiate the price as much as you can at multiple dealerships so that you can get the best price for yourself because also you may be thinking to yourself oh, what's the point of saving 5k if i'm already paying 200 000 for this car but that's a lot of money and that's money you can save on so negotiate the shit out of that price tag and also go for a test drive i think that's fun i think you should do it i think um i think i was too scared i was just like i'm not i'm not about to like if you don't want to no one's gonna force you but i feel like it's a good way to get a good feel of the car and it's just fun like literally do it have the time of your life I had to move the sun disappeared but back to where i was okay so now you've been to multiple dealerships you found the car you've negotiated a good price now it's time to actually buy the car so when you go to the dealership they're going to give you something called an otp that's your offer to purchase do not sign anything until you know which car you are buying so only sign this when you are 100 percent sure that this is the car that you're buying on your otp you're going to have the cost of your car the negotiated price and then you're gonna have like any accessories you're getting and then certain like extras for me my extras were my delivery fee and the license and registration cost and then there are certain on the road costs that are gonna come with your car so this can be the cost of your pre-delivery inspection your certificate of road worthiness delivery fuel but also these costs are not supposed to sum up to a huge amount i think on average expect something like five thousand to like max six thousand around that price range but also it's very important that you go through each cost and actually ask questions as to what does this relate to is there any way that we can lower this cost because i know them right there was no need for me to be paying two thousand rands for licensing and registration so you want to literally look at every cost so that you know exactly what you're paying for because you don't want the dealership to be dumping certain costs there that you don't know about or costs that shouldn't be there and yeah so you sign your otp and in order to buy your car you're gonna need your id and your proof of address i don't think you're gonna need anything else and basically now you have a car yay <laughs> but we're not done and the next step for me was deciding on financing unless you're buying your car cash which is great for you <laughs> some of us have to find financing for our cars you can either get financing from the bank that you're using i use investec i have a young professionals account with them and i feel like the process was a lot easier that way if you want to sign up for that i'll leave a link down below or there's gonna be certain financing available at the dealership i'm not actually familiar with that process but i feel like it would be probably similar to the process that you have with the bank but also with financing you need to decide on certain things like how long are you gonna pay your car off for so this can be like three four five six years what's the interest rate that you're going to be paying and compare different financing options in order to get the best deal out of it you want to consider things like are you going to be are you going to be paying for a deposit are you going to be paying a balloon payment i wouldn't recommend getting a balloon payment because as much as your monthly installments are very affordable there's a large amount of money that you need to pay at the end unless you have really good discipline you may not have the money to actually pay off your balloon payments at the end of this process you are allowed to negotiate your interest rates you want to literally tailor your financing to something that you know you're going to be able to pay off throughout the five six years and something that you're comfortable with paying off monthly and step number six is definitely insurance my dealership was like you're not leaving the dealership without insurance and obviously i also didn't want to please i believe you need to have insurance before you can leave with your car and you want to pick an insurance company that you know is going to pay off your claim if you ever do claim for me i think hippo was a great website to actually compare different codes for my car insurance but things that you want to look out for throughout this process is first of all you want comprehensive cover comprehensive cover means that you're covered for anything and everything so things like maybe theft or fire or an accident you are covered for and also you want a reasonable excess fee if your excess fee is very low chances are your premiums are a lot higher to make up for that whereas if your excess is very high your premiums are very low but then also you need to be able to afford that so for your excess fee choose an amount that you know you're going to be very comfortable paying out no matter what it shouldn't be something so high that it takes you out of pocket and you can't literally afford it but also you don't want it to be very low typically i would expect or recommend that you have an emergency fund that's either 
the same or more than your excess fee just in case something happens and this should be an amount that you you always have saved up and you know if anything happens that you can pay out and also again important with insurance you are allowed to negotiate literally if you have to lie lie be like this insurance company is offering me this this and this can you top that even after a year literally go back to your insurance company and be like so hey guys i've been with you for a year now i haven't had any claims can you reduce my insurance premium in any way and then yeah once all of this is sorted once you have your financing once you have your insurance you now have a car you can go get your car from the dealership you still need to register your car with the licensing office i believe you have 21 days after purchasing the vehicle to actually register your car for me my dealership did all of that and there are a bunch of documents that you are going to need it's going to be things like your proof of residence your id id copies there's a whole list of things that you're going to need all of this is available on like the licensing traffic department website i'll leave a link down below and then after that i was good to go and yeah like congratulations first of all um let me know how it goes um if you have any questions just comment down below all the best like i'm so excited on your behalf and don't forget to subscribe um like this video if you found it very helpful <music>